Welcome again and uh, right now you are listening or you're watching the Wisdom CDs right here on Health 360 Network, Balajan. And yes, we have it as a studio, Dr. Shani Robbins, who actually has pioneered this concept of wisdom therapy. And as you know about him, he actually is a professor at Stanford and professor of multiple colleges. And also he has uh, authored or co-authored many, uh, many articles and research, scientific research on wisdom therapy and also has a, a double doctorate also in mindfulness and also in uh, wisdom uh, skills, Balajan. Uh, first of all, welcome. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank and you. And Dr. Robbins, in the previous episode, you actually talked about wisdom therapy and how it's a, it's a merging of the Eastern and Western philosophies. And in the talk, you also talked about uh, wisdom skills. Now, we always use the word wisdom skill easily. And for people who are listening for the very first time, can you talk a little bit about what exactly wisdom skills are and if you can list a few of them out for the Habanus? Sure. And so if you look at uh, Eastern Western approaches to well-being, what does it mean to be happy and so on? In the West, it's mostly about the self. So in the West, it's been things like cognitive behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. and things like reducing cognitive distortions, being more realistic. So for example, if I have cognitive distortions such as all or nothing thinking, catastrophizing, shoulds. So if I wake up in the morning and I go to work and I think there shouldn't be any other cars on the road, that unrealistic assumption is going to create a great deal of frustration and irritation. So I'm, I'm setting myself up for a lot of frustration and anger. Hmm. And so the notion of being more realistic comes across as a happier self. Mm -hmm. But again, this is still a focus on the self. So what about transcending self? So empathy and compassion towards others. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a practicable skill as well. And so when we're standing at a Starbucks line, for example, and we're getting frustrated that there's seven, eight people in line ahead of us, it's moving slower than we would like, we could, for a moment, for 30 seconds, ask ourselves, I wonder how the cashier is doing right now, the hmm. barista that's serving us. So there's a quick empathy practice that gets us over ourselves for those 30 seconds, rather than what do I want, what do I need, which is very self-centered, self-focused. Mm -hmm. And so that would be an example of, of empathy, compassion, ego transcendent practices. Then another piece of wisdom is emotional intelligence. And so I may become aware of what thoughts I have, but now, how are those thoughts connected to emotions? So, for example, realizing that when I am angry, mm -hmm. that's often connected to an unrealistic expectation. So it's some expectation that either there won't be traffic in the morning or the lines will go faster or I'll get more promotions at work than I'm getting or that I'll be spoken to more nicely by my spouse or by some colleagues and so on. And so whatever our expectations are, mm -hmm. questions is, are they realistic? Mm -hmm. Are they appealing to cognitive distortions? Are they mostly about myself and others? And then what emotions are they connected to? So once we start realizing these things are happening, part of what emotional intelligence is, be able to even identify what emotion I'm feeling right now. Is it frustration, irritation? And then am I catching it early before it escalates to anger or rage? Mm -hmm. Do I catch sadness before it escalates to depression? Do I catch anxiety before it escalates to panic attacks? Hmm. And if I can catch my emotions earlier, and that's one part of emotional intelligence, then I can do all sorts of things to regulate my emotions. Like, for example, take a deep breath. So I can literally just take a deep breath and calm my body down. And now I have that space to think about, well, I wonder what thoughts I had, what expectations, what cognitive distortions that might have been related to that emotion. Mm -hmm. So now I can do the cognitive work too, not just the physiological work for my body. And notice that's, that's still focused on myself. So again, cognitive behavioral therapy and a few other therapies in the West have been very good in doing this. Mm -hmm. But then the next question is, I'm frustrated with the person in front of me, but I wonder how they're doing. That's the empathy, compassion empathy. practice, okay. the ego transcendent practice, getting mm -hmm. over ourselves for a few seconds. And there's no reason why we can't do both. And in fact, what I've found in my research is that it works very well when you do both, much better than either one separately. Mm -hmm. So that's... Those pieces. A couple of other pieces are um, humility. Mm -hmm. And what I define as humility is the ability to recognize that our perception of events is subjective. Other people are seeing it differently. Wow. And it's also tentative. We change our mind over time. If you think about change, our opinions have changed dramatically over years about things like politics, religion, mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. uh, sexuality. And so as we change our opinions about things, uh, we can also get the recognition that the humility that our opinions will likely change over time. There's no reason why, any reason to think that would stop. And so when, while we're too busy arguing that I'm right, somebody else is wrong, we can 
take a deep breath, remind ourselves, I wonder how they're thinking, empathy, and at the same time, humility. I may be wrong about this. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking about it and seeing something else. I wonder what they're seeing, being curious. Mm -hmm. So that's part of humility, too. And then I wonder if I'll change my mind over time. That's mm -hmm. another piece. The other piece of humility is just the notion that we're about this big on the grand scheme of things. If you stand mm. in front of the ocean mm -hmm. or you look up in the sky, it gives you a small sense of that. And that's just one planet. If you look at our galaxy, that's true. it's 100 billion stars. <laughs> that's true, yes. It's hard to wrap our mind around the magnitude of that. But yeah. here's one example. If we're on one grain of sand in the ocean and the Earth is one grain of sand, we already know there are more stars in the universe than all the grains of sand and all the oceans of the world combined. Wow. And of course, so, that's wisdom right there for you guys. And of course, we, in this series, the idea is to introduce you to all these skills. And uh, yes, uh, don't worry about it if you feel overwhelmed because some of these, uh, uh, the words and the jargon news uh, might seem very, very uh, daunting and sometimes even overwhelming because, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, all those things. Don't worry about that. In fact, uh, the idea or the purpose, which I think why we came together with Dr. Roshan Robbins is uh, his philosophy is he wants to make sure everybody starts to lead a developmentally oriented lifestyle. And the uh, so the series is actually uh, presented to you guys uh, by Dr. Robbins and also made possible by Pragna.org to make sure everybody out there can understand this concept and lead a happy and healthy life, right? Uh, that, that's, that's exactly right. And probably one last skill I'll mention is mm -hmm. gratitude practice. Please. So we've taken a lot for granted in life. Most of us don't wake up in the morning and say, I can't believe my hands work today or it's great that my eyes work today. That's awesome. We don't appreciate the fact that we can wake up one morning and one of those things may not work. Mm -hmm. Tonight in the emergency room at Stanford or other places, there'll be hundreds of people that come in and those people may never be able to walk again or wow. see again. And so there's a sobering reality that gratitude, like many of the other skills I just mentioned, mm -hmm. are more realistic. That that's why we shouldn't take it for granted because tomorrow we literally may not be able to do it. But most of us assume we'll either live forever or we'll be able to do this stuff forever. <laughs> yeah. So we just lose the gratitude on that. And so we habituate to it. And so gratitude practice is in effect a, this habituation process. Hmm. And so, and all of these skills together are just a matter of practice. We typically practice feeling more entitled hmm. or we get upset in our unrealistic ways because we make demands of the world that are unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if we're more realistic and practice these skills, it goes a long way towards them becoming automatic. And that's how we start seeing the world. And you start seeing not only an increase in mindfulness, which is another skill that we want to mention, being more present and less reactive, more mm -hmm. aware, in empathy, emotional intelligence. These skills start kicking in and become automatic. And so mm -hmm. there's a fun joke about somebody uh, visiting, uh, I think I mentioned this to you, uh, at some point in the past, somebody visiting New York, a tourist, and uh, <laughs> is asking for directions to Carnegie Hall. The, so the native New Yorker responds, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? The native New Yorker responds, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> yes, but just practice, it's practice, practice. Pure practice. And I think we should keep that as a regular mantra for all our shows and on here, right, Damon and Dan. And the whole Sounds purpose good. is, uh, yes, we are listing out the wisdom skills for you guys. And going forward in the series, we will talk in detail about all these skills individually, for sure, for you guys to be able to understand this. And yes, we'll try to find... Uh, uh, opportunities uh, in our lives uh, which can where we can use these skills also so stay tuned for this wisdom series it's going to come to you guys uh, online of course we are available on demand for you guys but if you want to listen to us on air live you can go check it out on uh, media mahima's link or you can go to radio the hotties and listen to them monday wednesday and friday we come there 9 30 a.m sharp on good morning bay and right now i want to practice one of the skills uh, dr shawin robbins talked about that's gratitude practice uh, dr robbins thank you so much uh, i've learned a lot talking to you guys on these skills on these and I hope our band is also able to emulate the same thing. Once again, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Welcome. I appreciate your interest.